replied, but I, as far as I know, Lawrence Mandel in Toronto is the keeper of the user agent across all three products. Oh, okay. So what does he say? I don't know, but I was hoping you got your information from a Lawrence wiki page. Lawrence is, uh, shall we say, very proper. And I think you should consult him because he has, he has exhaust. It's very tedious, the whole user agent debate. He has been through every phase of that very tedious and annoying user agent, user agent string debate. So the, the thing is that um, I, I got my information from uh, the MDN page. Like, I talked uh, to Lawrence. I'll see if I can dig up uh, Lawrence's page. OK. Well, there was a recent blog post about it. Um, I think it was on Hacker News, I think, yesterday or the day before. Oh. And um, I think it was by Podge. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And he pointed to the uh, uh, wiki page, the MDN page, which I think is also kept up to date. Well, Lawrence, but it doesn't I have the one, information about the. But Lawrence is maybe he's the one who's writing that. Either Lawrence is the expert or someone else. He, he's directing somebody else. He's he's in charge okay. of the UA, as far as I know. But we uh, we tested it out on the phones. See. Uh, you probably can't read it, but. Oh, no, I, I believe you that that's Gecko how it's implemented. 18.1. Uh, yeah, it's the Gecko version. It's not the Firefox version, to be pedantic. Well, it says yeah. Firefox version 18.1 also. Oh, uh, well. Which is yeah, weird. talk to Lawrence. And my, <laughs> and my Geeks phone does the same thing. So my Geeks phone says, because it's on 1.2, let's see. Hello. Yeah. See, and it says Firefox and Gecko version 26. Right. It says device specific user agent strings are discouraged. Hmm. Tablet. Where's so, tablet? Roland, I think I didn't add you to the uh, bug that I had filed for it. Let oh, you did. That. You did. Oh, I did? OK. Yeah. All right, then I, I'm glad I did. Uh, because it links to the. Um, yep, that's how I found out about this page. I'm looking at the page you linked to in the book. Okay. Hello, everyone. Hello. Yes, and in fact, um, in fact, Kadir, Lawrence Mandel is the last editor of that wiki page, of the MDN page. Perfect, that's even better. So if that hey. page is unclear, I would ping him directly. So. We're already talking about this, so we should actually just talk about this. I think Ricky's on the call. I saw him briefly for a second, and I think he face muted. But um, oh. there he is. Hey, it's the it's the weekly platform meeting, and um, we're talking about Show Four for Firefox OS. So let's talk about that, since that's on the list anyway. Um, so we're all excited because it looks like. <laughs> we can use the user agent string to tell what version of Firefox OS uh, somebody has. Um, I saw in the bug, Ricky was like, this is going to be a, such a pain in the butt. And <laughs> seemed like it was, a, it was hard oh to do. <laughs> but I was going to, my question to Ricky was, why is that? We've implemented the same type of thing for all kinds of UA strings, isn't it just an addition? Well, uh, right don't now, I, we, don't I know? Right, right now, we pretty much are hard coded to handle Android and desktop, right? We don't, that's not very, I don't know, like all the code is basically assumes mobile or desktop. So we're adding a new product. And Sank has tried to add Thunderbird and I haven't heard back. So uh, yeah, that was awesome. <laughs> So yeah, uh, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. I mean, it's doable, but we'll see how, how much it takes. Oh, because right. it's so, a new product, right? It's not a browser. It's not FX thirty six or anything. It's FX OS. Yeah, and having the Firefox OS, the Firefox O version in the UA string is optional and discouraged by Mozilla. If you read this MDN page. Yeah. No, no, the um, manufacturer the string man is discouraged. Right. The manufacturer string. 
but uh, n n I mean, it's doable. It's just I don't know what's gonna take, and it's but it's way different than like like in mobile Firefox twenty three means Gecko version twenty three. Here we're saying Gecko version twenty three is Firefox OS one zero or one one. I mean, it's totally different, right? Yeah, the so, mapping is different. Mapping and all that. But yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, we'll see. I mean, we'll do it, and we need it, right? So. And then I guess I'd like to point out that there's no way of detecting if it's an Android tablet from our UA string. Actually, there is. Um, it says tablet in the actual user agent of the Android tablet. It's also documented on the page, but I also tested it on my Android device. It actually does. There is a bug for it. I, I hope I'm uh, ICCG to that, um, to serve the desktop version to, the, to Android tablets, at least Android tablets, but in tablets in general. Oh, right. OK, you're right. I'm sorry. But the preferred way to target content to a tablet is to do CSS media queries. Yeah, we decided yeah. against media queries from the beginning. Oh. I mean, uh, uh, Ricky, Ricky can tell you more about that. But we decided against using media queries. So for all of our um, discovery, we are actually using the user agent. Um, I mean, that's what it is. Yeah, when we redesign the site next year, we'll we'll do a responsive layout. All right? We have to uh, redesign the site every what? two years. We do? Oh. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, I thought you were joking about when we design. <laughs> well, I mean, really. I mean, next year, the site is going to look old. Like, you have to keep redesigning it every two yeah. years, right? So. OK. I'll keep that in mind, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, put it on the roadmap because it's going to happen. You know, Creative is going to come up with a new sandstone version for whatever. <laughs> so, oh, oh, Ricky, yeah. Ricky, should we key off this tablet token, this string tablet in the UA in any way? Uh, any well, that's what, that's what I think Kadir proposed in, in that bug. OK. So we don't at the moment. OK, great. Thank you. Uh, so Ricky, to clarify, uh, we are using uh, the Django, I don't know, is it the middleware? But we are using uh, whatever Django is using to detect mobile or desktop, right? We're using um, a, a library that we wrote for, for detecting that, yeah. It's okay. a Django mobility or something. Oh, so I, I thought it was already baked in into Django, but uh, OK. So that means it should be fairly straightforward for us to uh, overwrite that for the Android tablet then, right? Um, it should be, uh, hmm. so we detect mobile or we would have to change the, it's like a regex and we detect mobile versus desktop. So we would have to like add some negative things. So if it has tablet, then it's not mobile or something. I think right now, if it has Android, then we say it's mobile. So now we're going to have to say if it has Android and it doesn't have tablet, then it's mobile. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Unless next year you come up with a tablet UI for Sumo. No, we'll just uh, do it, responsive and have one UI that right. adjusts to everything. OK. That too works. Please. <laughs> I don't know. Create okay, a mic. Maybe I, mi I missed this. Didn't we, do, didn't we do it this way because it was easier in Django? Mm. Yeah, I'm mistaken. Did it this way because they designed the site that way. And I thought Brown or somebody was one of the separate Complete. Yeah, no, no. I mean, we did the mo the mobile view was supposed to look not look like nothing like the desktop site. That was uh, intentional. It was supposed to look like a Firefox OS app. Yeah. Maybe we will make the uh, website look like a Firefox OS app. Who knows? Oh, nice. Yes. <laughs> <clears throat> I think we should, if we're going to keep the app, then the app should look like an app and then have the site look like consistent across mobile and desktop. Should be a good way to do it. That's just my opinion on it. Oh, man. But then we have to maintain uh, an app, uh, the, mo mo yeah, the, the actual website and the app. Uh, mm. But I mean, right now we're maintaining two different sets of templates, which is right. Good. That's all. That's what it would be, right? It would just be the two templates. One would be a responsive one. One would be the one that we have currently for the mobile. And you would have to maintain uh, the app version. Well, the app version would be the mobile template thing that we have now, is what Ricky's saying. Mm -hmm. 
know what do you mean to maintain a responsive site and the app so yeah. two sets of templates and, and right now we're maintaining two sets of templates as well yeah. so. no no michael what he means is we would have an app in the marketplace and then we would have another uh template that would uh, res uh, respond to the screen size and it would just be one set of templates for desktop and mobile and it would just well be responsive but right. it would still have the app in the marketplace, which right. means we would still have to take care of the app version. Yes, so it's the same amount of work as we're doing now, I thought, is what Ricky was saying. Yeah, exactly. Right. Okay. Yeah, well, I mean, it's an interesting discussion, but we probably don't have to have it right now. <laughs> okay. True. Anyways, that's great news. I'm sorry I was misinformed about the tablet in the string. That's cool. Anything else we want to talk about, about show four and new A strings? No. All right, let's back up. And these were like the, the leftovers from, I don't know, two or three weeks ago now. Mm -hmm. um, these are kind of all for Kadir, but Kadir, I was quickly paging through your presentation and maybe some of this is handled in the presentation too. Do you want to say anything about these? No, actually, what I had to say, uh, what I wanted to say, is that I couldn't test these because uh, what I'm presenting now took precedence. Got so it. I would have to, like, with Optimizely, we can only turn it on or off. Um, uh, so I, I would have to, I can only do one A/B testing at a time. Gotcha. Uh, and I was already A/B testing for the presentation that I'm about to give. So unfortunately, I'm really sorry. We have to move this uh, to to the next. Um, the next week. Okay. So you want to do this presentation? Or are you going to share your screen? I don't know how well it's yeah. going to come out on my darn video, but let's see. Okay. Um, let's try this. So I'm, I I can't see what you guys are seeing. I see it. And hopefully you can see my screen. Uh, I don't know how this works. Maybe, oops. OK, this is really big. But can you guys still see it? Yep. Try putting yep. it in presentation mode to see if that works. Yeah, I am actually. That, this is presentation mode. Oh, we see it like the Google Doc oh. with the thumbnails down the side and everything. I think it might uh, be because you're sharing the uh, uh, you're sharing the window instead of your whole uh, screen. I think there's oh, an option okay. to share the whole screen. Let me see. I can I should maybe it's this uh, window. Yeah. It's better. Yeah, that's just the presentation. Ah, perfect. Okay. Let's do this. So I haven't given this presentation before, and I'm a little underprepared, hopefully. Uh, this is still all intelligible, though. <laughs> but sorry about that. And um, yeah, if you have any questions about this, let me know. Um, so this is a report on the product landing page. Um, and it's Sumo's single most important page. That is uh, products slash, and then it, uh, usually it's products slash Firefox or products slash mobile. And I looked specifically at products slash Firefox. Um, so why is it important? It gets 70%, 75% of all in-product traffic. Um, they almost all land on this page. Uh, and everyone, um, everyone else lands on a targeted article or a threat when they come from Google or from in-product links. Uh, everybody lands on an article, and they already kind of know what to expect when they land there. The product landing page is the only place um, oh, that's, that's actually not targeted. Um, on top of that, it has very, uh, traffic coming from the product landing page has very low helpfulness ratings. Uh, so people who come from other places, uh, like Google or from in-product uh, links, which go directly to an article, they rate articles way ho uh, higher than people who land on the product landing page. And that is essentially a function of how well we uh, um, target people or how well we can 
uh, move people from the product landing page to an article that's actually in their interest or that interests them. Um, the better that is, the better their rating is. It's usually the, the people don't necessarily rate the article quality. Um, in both of those cases, it's the, it's the same articles that people are rating. But as you can see, one, um, one part is rating them as 50% helpful and another part is rating them as 70% helpful. And that's essentially a function of how well we can map the user to a, a, an article. Um, so then, uh, also, this page gets a lot of page views. It's 7.5 million page views per month. That's 5 million unique users per month coming, uh, landing on this page, and then moving on. And almost all of the searches on our site are launched from this page. So that's why this page is really of premium importance, of, is, is, is really important for Sumo. So when I did this, I had two goals. Uh, one goal was to define su the success criteria for this page, and the second uh, goal was to gain insights into user behavior so that we could increase our success rate from this page, whatever success uh, would be. And I did that by doing data analysis and A-B testing. Um, so talking about the success criteria, the first goal, of course, our overarching goal is to help as many people as possible to solve their problem. And uh, on the um, on the KB um, or, or on Sumo itself, that translates into uh, steering them to an appropriate article or a thread. And funny enough, to let them download Firefox. I'll come <laughs> back to this later. Like uh, I'll explain later why uh, helping them to download Firefox is also part of our success criteria. Um, but. What this boils down to is that um, article reads alone are not a good measure uh, because downloads are a success and people reading the wrong article is not success. Um, they rate them uh, actually lower than people who uh, hit the right article. So you can't go just by article reads. You can't just go by the CTR, the click-through rate. Um, so instead, what we should do is we should measure success as uh, visitors who downloaded Firefox and um, who read an article uh, divided by the visitors to that page. That is the CTR. How many people are we moving through to an article or to download Firefox? And uh, the other part of this equation is um, the helpful ratio by visitors who entered on a product landing page. As I said before, right now it's 50% compared to the general average of 70%. And the product of those two ratios, that's the uh, ratio of people who we are actually helping. So uh, the ratio of people who we are sending not only to an article, but to the right article. Um, and you can imagine that, um, like, this is a diagram of how to imagine this. So on the x-axis you have the helpful ratings here i'm not sure if you can see my mouse pointer yeah so helpful ratings are the x-axis uh, that is the 50 percent that i mentioned before where we are right now and uh people clicking through to an article that is the y-axis um, so what you can have is you can have a lot of people clicking through and uh very people rating the article uh low or rating the articles low then you would have this uh, point here. Um, so lots of people clicking through, but then they land on the wrong article. Or you could have something like people rating articles very high, uh, but very few people actually clicking through to an article. And what you actually want to do, of course, is you want to send as many people as possible to an article on, on this axis. The CTR should be 100%, but those who click through should also rate the articles um, as helpful in 100% of the cases. And that's when you, uh, how you end up here. And essentially what we, want, what we are trying to do is we are trying to maximize the, um, uh, uh, the, the uh, area under the square. Um, and how we do that doesn't matter that much. Like as long as we increase the square, we increase uh, the percentage that we are helping because that is that is essentially that is the product 
people clicking through and people uh, mar ma marking an article as helpful. The product of this is the square and it's uh, the percentage. That's the helpfulness percentage, so to say. Hopefully, uh, this makes sense. Yeah. Uh, to give you the current status. Uh, so, 31.6% of the people who land on the product landing page currently, they either download Firefox or they land on an article. And 50% of those uh, vote articles as helpful, as I said before. So, um, if you, the product of those two things is 16%. Uh, so, it's 30.6% uh, uh, times 50%, that's 16%. And you can see it marked here. Um, as you can see, that, that is the square. So it's point, uh, fifty percent on article votes, the helpfulness, and uh, thirty-one percent in article reads. That's where we are today, we and where we actually a... want to get to is yeah, here, top right corner. Yeah, exactly. We want to be here, and we are here. So now we can either make sure that everyone who goes through like that, uh, two th things. Uh, we can make sure that the CTR goes up, which would bring us up here. Or we can make sure that people who, who click through to an article, it's the right article for them, and then we would end up here. Um, and if we can do both, then we will end up here. So, um, of course, uh, I mean, those are the two things. Uh, a is how can we help more people reach an article, and B is how can we help more people reach the right article. And this is the, se this is the second goal. This is about gaining insights, like why are people not clicking through and how can we make people click through? Um, so what, it, what I did for that is first look into how the page is being used. And you can see something that, um, you can see that here. So 55% currently just bounce from this page. They don't click through. Uh, they don't click on anything. 0.5% um, click on the Get Involved uh, button. 11% click on the, one of the help topics. 5% click on the hot topics, 7% click on downloads, 14% search, and 7.5% do other things like they click on the main navigation or on the breadcrumbs or something else. Um, but I mean, a lot of this is to be expected, like the search, the bounce rate, the hot topics, the hot topics. So th those are to be expected, right? But why on earth are 7.5% of the people clicking on the download button on the product landing page? We are the support side after all. And so I did a survey. Uh, whoever clicked on the download button, I gave them a survey uh, and asked essentially, why did you just click on the download button? And the, of course I was curious because it might be that people uh, think this, like this is the flashiest uh, button on the page. Uh, so just let's see what's behind it. But it turns out that is not the case at all. Uh, so 16% are downloading it because um, they don't have Firefox on their computer, which is fine. But then 52% download it because they want to update Firefox. Uh, and 23% download it. And well, actually, we don't know why they want to update Firefox from this page. We have no idea. It might be because the updater is failing. It might be because uh, they don't know how else to update Firefox. It might be that some page told them to update their uh, browser, even though it's unnecessary. Like, we don't know, but we know they come here to update their Firefox, not to download it because they don't have it on their computer. That's just the 16%. And then 23% here, they want to download Firefox because they uh, have a problem. Uh, so they want to fix, fix the problem by reinstalling Firefox, which in most cases are, is actually not going to help them. Um, and only, as you can see, only 2.4% click on the button because they want to know what's behind it. They just wanted, they were curious. Um, so mm. my first initial reaction was totally wrong. People clicking on the download button, they do it on purpose and they really want to download Firefox. So if we take the download button away, it's actually going to uh, worsen their experience because then, then they have to read articles and find out how they can download Firefox. There you go. Um, so then, I mean, uh, one part of it is uh, finding out like how high the bounce rate is, like how many people don't do anything on a page. 
But then the interesting thing is to dive deeper. And if you dive deeper, you see that the CTR from that page is not uniform. Um, so uh, the percentage of people moving forward from the product landing page to any other page, like search or um, the start page or uh, an article, that's 43% from the United States. This is ENUS, by the way. We are looking at uh, ENUS. Um, so 43% from the United States click through. Because we are exceptional. If you heard it from Obama, we are exactly. <laughs> Apparently, because as you can see, uh, the CTR from India, it's 14%. And the CTR from Indonesia, it's 10%. So why is that? Um, it's very probably related to uh, getting a page in English when they don't expect it. So it might be that Indonesian people download the English uh, Firefox, but they, when they expect help, they actually want to get help in their own language. They don't mind using the browser in another language because it has minimal UI, and they don't need to be able to use the um, to, to read anything or um, much uh, using using the browser. But when the browser fails, when there is an issue, they need uh, support in their own language. Then they come to the uh, product landing page, and of course, we go by the uh, user agent, and the user agent is English. Uh, so what happens is that we give them an English version of the page, even if we have um, a version in their own language, which is, I think, the case for India, uh, at least for some languages that are spoken there. So that is an insight, like it's not uniform. And just making the page better, to, um, like changing the design of the page or changing the UI of the page, is not going to increase the CTR outside of those regions where um, uh, English is actually uh, the main language that is spoken. Um, so in the US, that's going to work. But in India, Indonesia, we have to do other things. Um, so what, what other things can we do um, for, for example, in the US or in Germany or in France where people actually don't have the language problem? Um, so what I wanted to figure out is, do different designs affect the rate at which people reach an article? And do different designs affect the rate at which people reach the right article? Um, so first, uh, just uh, to look into how is the design affecting the page at all? Uh, so I tested a number of different variations. Uh, the first one, um, so you have the help uh, hot topics on the bottom, as you can see here. This is the product landing page with the hot topics on the bottom. Then you have uh, minimal, only the help uh, topics, no hot topics, no search, no uh, download button. Then just, just removing the download button. Then no hot topics. Uh, other than that, everything is on the page. And then the big search button. Uh, and finally, uh, just uh, uh, remove the get involved button and everything else stays on the page. Uh, so I tested those uh, uh, variations, and the results were uh, sometimes inconclusive, but there were uh, actually interesting parts. Um, like, for example, if you remove the arti um, download button, then article reads go up but it doesn't uh, uh, actually translate into more people helped because what they're trying to do is find an article that leads them to the download button. Uh, so not a good idea to remove the download button. Uh, then um, removing the, no, the uh, hot topics doubles the number of people who uh, click through to uh, the topic landing page. What's unclear, though, at this point is does it also increase the number of people who find the right article when we take away the uh, hot topics? So, and the, and the, uh, the last uh, uh, insight from this is the big search button. Like if you put that on the page, this is really weird, but instead of increasing the number of searches, it reduces the number of searches by 8%. Um, so it could be because it's in an unfamiliar uh, uh, position. People might expect the uh, search button at the top right of a page. So when you change the uh, place, the placing, people don't recognize it as a uh, search button anymore uh, or search box. 
so that was an interesting insight. Just a big search button alone is not going to cut it. So then, of course, uh, as I said, this, these are two parts of the same uh, goal. You want to know um, what, what increases the CTR, but you also want to know uh, what, what would increase the number of helpful votes. So did, uh, unfortunately, that's really cumbersome, so I could, couldn't do that on all the variations that we had, but I selected a few that uh, seemed like really um, interesting in terms of um, what, what they ch changed uh, with, with the CTR alone. Um, so, uh, so what you can see here is um, I tested three different variations of the page. Uh, one, the original, then the hot topics at the bottom, and uh, no hot topics at all. And it's interesting because, as you can see here from this slide, uh, the click-through rate to an article, like not just the click-through rate to, uh, to the next page or to, um, to the topic landing page or anything, but the actual click-through to an article, which helps people, is essentially the same no matter what the design is. Um, so that didn't change much. But as you can also see, the helpful voting, it changed a lot. So on our current um, uh, var uh, variation of the, hot, of the um, uh, yeah, so uh, excuse me, I said hot topics on top, but it should say original page, what we have at, at, at the moment. Um, it has a 50% helpful uh, uh, rating, as I said before. If you put the help, help, hot topics at the bottom, that rating goes up to 53%. But if you remove the hot topics, the rating goes up to 60%. So 60% of the people mark articles, uh, articles as helpful. What, our and hot this, topics are not helpful? Well, no, you so, know. So this, this could. I was, I was so going to say. Means, sorry. Yes. Go ahead, Kadir. Uh, so, so this means that uh, the click-through rate, as you can see, means that still the same number of people are landing on an article in the, if we remove the hot topics. It's essentially the same. Uh, they don't click on the hot topics on the uh, product landing page, but more people click through to an article. And that actually balances it out, so you end up with the same click-through rate for all of the variations. But with the difference in the helpful votings, you end up with a different percentage actually being helped. In the original, 16% are being helped. In the, when we put hot topics at the bottom, where fewer people click on them, 17% 17, 17 are helped. And if you remove them completely, 19% are being helped. Uh, Michael, you wanted to say something? Yeah, so, so actually, that fits with, um, if you remember, like, when Crystal first got that um, analysis of our old, old, page you know one of the things that they noticed was direct links to articles on the home page quickly took people like they were attractive and they quickly took people to some place that was not necessarily the right place and then from there finding the right place was much more difficult um, so that kind of makes sense those hot topics are pretty attractive and if that's right. not your issue then it's harder to find the thing that you really want. Right. Yeah. Right. And that's actually supported by um, the analysis or, or the observation that when you put hot topics at the bottom, fewer people click on them. Um, so it doesn't necessarily mean that be just because they click on them that they actually have that issue that is, um, that is the title of the article. It's just one more thing to click on. And if it's there, people will click on it but it doesn't actually help them, as we can see from um, the analysis. So this could, um, this could mean a number of things. This could mean that uh, hot topics might be more useful on the subtopic landing pages, uh, because people then have already um, limited uh, the number of topics that, or the number of articles that we would show them and the scope of the articles. So showing a hot topic on a topic landing page might actually be more useful. Also because we are already showing um, articles on that page. So highlighting hot uh, articles might be more useful there. Um, yeah, so this is actually what I just uh, said. Uh, essentially removing the hot topics from a product landing page 
leads to the same amount of people reaching an article, but 10 percentage points higher ratings from the from articles or for articles. Without this is interesting, and this is why I'm pointing this out. Without changing the articles, we're changing the helpfulness of the articles. Um, so that means the helpfulness rating itself is definitely not only about the quality. The, the large part of that is a function of how well it fits uh, the problem that the user is having at that point. Um, so to visualize this uh, on, our, on, on this... Um... Kadir? Yes? Excuse me. Um, I have, a, I have a, a quick question, and it's regarding uh, localized content, because the helpful rates there mm -hmm. are very different sometimes. Um, sometimes you can see a direct effect on the localization uh, coverage. Sometimes it's not so clear. So um, I want to know if you had some time during this research to take a look at that, uh, or if you have any fun. And if not, I just don't want to interrupt the, the, the presentation. It's just a, a question. Right. So, so for the helpfulness ratings, unfortunately, I wasn't able to do that. I was able to do it for the click-through rate. And yes, on the click-through rate, you can see uh, less majority or, or huge differences. Uh, unfortunately, I wasn't able to do it for the um, helpfulness rating uh, as well. And okay. you're right. I assume from what we know so far that it would actually, um, we would have differentiations based on the localization coverage. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. No, that, that was just a question. So I, I don't want to, uh, I don't want to interrupt anymore. Thank you. No problem. Thanks for the question. And um, yeah, uh, getting back to the slide, um, I just wanted to point out like where we are right uh, after those, uh, after testing those variations. So as you can see, the CTR didn't change much. Uh, it might be necessary to actually be language aware to improve the CTR. But uh, changing the design of the page of, and what we are offering on that page, it changed uh, the helpfulness rating. So we went from here from 50%, uh, we went to 60%. And of course, the goal is to drive that even further. But also, of course, the goal is to drive that up um, to increase that square. Um, so yeah, if you removed hot topics, you would be here at that point, just by doing that, without reducing the number of people who click through, an, through to an article. Um, so yeah, the recommendations. Of course, the first one is uh, add a GeoIP to product landing page, uh, Whoa, so that we can serve the correct language. Yeah. Sorry. What was that? GeoIP, 10%, okay. yes. Yeah, so by doing that, we can actually detect the language um, or we can offer uh, people different experience. If you already know what language they uh, speak in that country, we could offer them the language right away and ask them or offer them to switch to English. Um, or we could do it the other way around. We could offer them the English version as we do today, but we could offer them uh, the page in their language too. This is similar to what, excuse me, what Google does on their page when you access it from, like, from Germany, but you access the English version of uh, Google. They will offer you to switch it uh, to German, um, and we could do something similar if if we actually detected uh, uh, the geolocation. Uh, the other uh, recommendation is to yeah remove hot topics from cloud landing page, and doing that alone because. Because this will, uh, this is such a high uh, frequently paged, a highly frequently a frequented page, we would help an, an additional 150,000 people per month just by removing the hot topics. I think that is huge. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Please I mean, it, it. Can you hear me? <laughs> yes. Hello, Ricky. Am I muted? Well, we can hear Am you. Am I now. here? Am I in a meeting? Start dancing and then I'll pay attention. So, uh, so you said um, for the landing page, seventy percent of the people come from in product, or? Uh, well, no, actually, almost all of them come from in product. Okay, so uh, so but... in, so in yeah. product. Okay, well, let me finish. Um, so in product includes the locale, and we re redirect to whatever locale their, their their browser is in. Are you saying that people use English browser? 
and they want help in a different language yes. or, or what? Yeah. Yeah, so the, the issue is that in uh, locales like, for example, Indonesia, uh, people might be using an English version of Windows. So when they go to mozilla.org and they want to download Firefox, what we offer them, because we also go by the uh, user agent there, is we will offer them an English version of uh, Firefox. And then they will install that English version of Firefox, and when they go to help, of course, they will see an English version of the help. It will land on EN, ENUS. Uh, slash product slash Firefox. So but, I assume you looked at the, the analytics, right? To to prove right. it. Okay. So, so you can as, so if you look in Google Analytics at the English product landing page, you see a lot of people from other countries. Yeah, of course they don't make up um, the like they don't make up ninety percent of the uh, visits because English itself, like the US itself, makes up a huge percent of our visits. But if you look at, for example, Indonesia, and you look at where they are landing, like clicks from Indonesia, where are they landing? Almost all of them are landing on ENUS slash product slash Firefox. Hmm. The same goes for India. They essentially all land on ENUS pages from that country. Okay. And their CTR is very low. Um, so when people come from India, to the product landing page, almost all of them of them land on ENUS slash product slash Firefox, and their CTR is only 14% compared to over 40% for those who come from the US. Um, okay. So you could say that maybe the content is uh, culture specific. It could be that uh, we are promoting things that are more of an issue in the US and less of an issue in India. But I also compared uh, this with the uh, UK. So people from the UK also land on ENUS, but their CTR is way higher. It's almost 40%. It's uh, in the 30% range uh, for people from the UK. So it's not that we are promoting US specific things. So. And yeah. So, and, and also, if you look at Germany, like people from Germany, they land on DE slash product slash Firefox, um, and their CTR is also in the 30% range. So the problem is, uh, so, so, so if you're in India um, and you have an English browser, we're going to redirect them to, to HIIN? That would be uh, the proposal, not, right? Well, it's, I'm not proposing to actually redirect them, but to offer them uh, a redirect, like Google, for example. If you land on, yeah. a, on one of their pages, oh, okay. it will ask you, would you like to see this page in? And then list the number of languages um, when you land on a page where they think you don't actually speak the language. OK. The thing is, like, most of these locales have like no localization. Right? Like, I'm looking at Indian, and it's like 14% total, 30% of the top 20. So, so we're going to redirect, we're going to say, hey, check it out in India and in Hindi or whatever. And then it's going to be on English anyway. I don't know. So, yeah, that is a, that's an uh, issue. well, that's another issue. Like, that's the next step. Right. Like, first, you need to get to, I mean, today, even if we had a totally perfectly localized Indian version, nobody would see it. Um, so, the first step is to actually send them there. Uh, oh. But then, of course, it needs to be localized. Yeah, the, the thing is also that you know many localizers find you know start auto localizing because they they you know they find the little thing that says you know you can localize here. Um, and if you look at the visits that you have for the different Indian languages, they're you know very very small. So uh, it's not necessarily a chicken and egg problem problem, but sure if we would redirect people we would have more visits and it would be um, easier to um, find localizers. Right. Um, but we, can, we, can, we can try to work on both the fronts, trying to get those, local, those locales to uh, get a better percentage and then redirect people. Yeah, more potential yeah. localizers will see that message, like, hey, yeah. help localize yeah. this thing. And for the yeah, people this that also... don't speak English, uh, they'll also be more familiarized, at least, with the uh, user interface. Yeah, at least be able to navigate a little better. Yep. If the interface this also, is done. Right. This also ex helps to explain why Indonesian 
our, uh, Indonesia is actually one of our biggest countries. Uh, we have over, uh, I think, 15% or higher uh, uh, market share in Indonesia. It's a huge country. It shows up in our top uh, locales uh, of Firefox usage, but it doesn't show up in the top locales for Sumo. Um, and this helps to explain why, because people are not using the Indonesian, Indonesian version of it. They're actually using the English version. Uh, or at least a lot of them. I mean, almost all of them, according to Google Analytics. So yeah, this will be one way of increasing the CTR. Um, and that, that's the first part, that is geolocation. And the other part is uh, increasing the helpfulness, and that is removing the uh, hot topics. Kadir, you're going to. You guys have this. questions about this? So I, yeah, I mean, well, yes. I would, I would try to prove it first before doing any GOAP. I would try to do an experiment to prove that people really um, want this. Right? We could fake. We could like. Yeah. Do sure. A Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, with all of these things, we should uh, do uh, some testing before we actually implement them. I can't imagine that ge geolocation will actually be um, difficult. It might be worth it because it's uh, highly frequented, but we would have to test this beforehand. So far, from all the testing that I've done so far, it points in that direction very much. But let's. Yeah, Roland, you had a question too? Um... You're going to link to this from the Etherpad, right? Yes, absolutely. OK, and then the other question is, where will they see hot topics? Or where could people see hot topics? I know you said this, but I missed it, or I zoned out. Yeah, so this actually leads me to uh, the next slide, um, which is further recommendations. And that is A-B testing, um, different things, adding more subtopic information on product landing pages. And um, also A-B testing, things like uh, putting uh, the hot topics on the topic landing pages. Right. So oh, okay. on the topic landing pages, we are showing articles anyway. So it wouldn't be premature. But also, uh, they are limited in scope. Uh, so when someone clicks on uh, like uh, problems with Firefox, then showing them hot topics there is probably be, uh, going to be more helpful yep. than uh, showing the same article to someone who is actually trying to download Firefox. Yeah, OK. Uh, but that we should test that. So that's the uh, that's everything. what I mean. Like further recommendations. If you do that, we should test it that it doesn't have inverse effects. Um, but I'm assuming that putting it there will actually increase the helpfulness uh, because it will highlight an article when they are already looking for something similar. Awesome. Um, then, as I said, I mean A/B testing, adding more subtopic information on the product landing pages that could also increase the CTR because we already know that people will click through use the sidebar to switch between the uh, topic landing pages. So having more information about the topic themselves might, be, um, might increase our CTR. Uh, and that is actually one of the designs uh, that we already have from Bram. And Michael also looked into the same direction. It's one thing to test. It could increase our CTR. Um, the next thing is to do surveys on a product landing page uh, to increase the CTR. Like to try and figure out why people are bouncing from that page, because still the majority is bouncing. Um, and we don't know why uh, that they come to the page by mistake. We are looking at the reads, like once, how long are they staying on the page? Five seconds, 10 seconds. Um, but it's hard to actually get to the correct answer from that. So we might want to uh, ask them directly why they are bouncing from this page. Um, then the other one is uh, user testing, actual user testing. Um, so we could watch people uh, while, they are, while they are using the site and see how they are stumble, like when they are, when they are on this page, what makes them stumble on this page uh, or uh, what makes them um, uh, ab abandon this page and not click through to an article. So that those will be further um, tests that we should do to improve the CDR and improve the helpfulness. Because the helpfulness is still not at the site average. So we know that we can do better. Yeah. It's a so never ending process of fixing our website and making it better. Well, that's true. It's, uh, we can always do better. 
but now we have the um, metric to actually that, that tells us whether we are doing better. It's not only about the article reads, it's not only about the helpfulness, it's actually a product of those two yeah. that gives us an indicator for how well we are helping people come through this page. And um, Kadir, this is data, you can do these kind of data, get this data easier because we have Google Analytics. Yeah, so actually it's the combination, yes, exactly. It's the combination of Google Analytics and Optimizely uh, that makes this possible. So thank you, Ebai, for Google Analytics, and thank you, whoever arranged Optimizely. Thank you. Yeah, I'm really happy with both of those tools. Okay. Um, yeah, if you have further questions, uh, please let me know later after this uh, meeting. But now, um, let's move on to the questions uh, presentation. We got another one. Is this another, another one. sharing a screen kind of thing, or what are we doing? OMG, two presentations in one. We only have eight minutes left. Or Madeline, are you just going to talk, or is this, are you sharing your screen too? Well, Kadir needs to talk about the form because that's a long one. And I'm not even sure if we have time. I mean, it's only like eight minutes left. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm, I see that too now. I'm really sorry. I, this took uh, longer than I had expected. Um, Sorry about that. How long do you need, Madalena? Can we do it on the Monday meeting? Or no, it belongs next week? Or I don't know. Maybe we can do a quick maybe we can do a quick run through. Um, because yes, I wanted to say there is a lot more to come. Um, but this is this could be a quick run through uh, um, through the results that we got. Yeah, I was I was wondering if it wouldn't make sense. I mean, I know that I want to make the whole group wait, um, but I think that it's kind of like unfair to just have so little time for the second part, right? Madeline, I don't know if you need more time, so maybe we could do it at another we, meeting. I, I don't know, whatever is better for you guys. I'm just saying that it seems know, that... What I'm, yeah, what I'm saying is we could do it today, like a quick run through, and on Monday, the full version. Yeah, well, I if don't know how... I mean, if you want to go go do a quick run through, go ahead. I'm not sure how you can do that in five minutes though. Okay. Uh, well, at least we can talk about what we did. Um, so what we did was uh, we looked at, um, yeah, let me do this really quick. Uh, so we looked at uh, two weeks of data from the forum, uh, which uh, represents uh, 1,400 threats. Um, and we wanted to, um, our goal was uh, to first look into uh, how should questions be asked so that they can get, a, uh, get an answer. And the second part was uh, how should we uh, treat questions once they're asked uh, so that they get uh, a solution. Um, so those were the two, two parts that we looked at. Uh, Madlina looked at the ask question part of how to ask a question better so that, that it gets an answer. And I looked at the uh, forum part how to handle a question once it is in the forum uh, to make sure that it gets uh, a solution. And um, essentially, yeah, we looked at the um, a two week span um, and uh, then had the different different dimensions. Um, like I can, I'm currently I'm looking at my document here, which is uh, looking at the actual solved rate, uh, the reply rate after an hour, uh, like how many of those needed information from the user, how many needed, uh, 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 on how many did we drop the ball, uh, how many didn't have a solution, how many were off topic, uh, and on how many uh, did we uh, provide a solution within 24 hours. Uh, so dimensions like that, we looked at them. Madlina looked at um, how well the question was asked, like uh, did the grammar make a difference, did it make a difference whether we had about support information or not? Did it make a difference whether people were savvy or not? Did it make a difference whether um, uh, they knew whether they were in the forum or not? I'm not sure if I'm listing all those dimensions correctly, Marlena. Correct me if I'm not. Um, and then we looked at the actual findings. Uh, so I'm not going to go over the findings now because uh, we are almost through. Uh, but what we did was look at the findings and then come up with recommendations for how to react to that. Um, so that's, I think that's something that we can do at the Monday meeting, share that information with you. So it's like a sneak preview. I have a, I have a quick question. There's a this section about whether the user was aware if they were talking on a forum. 
and it's, it says yeah. you found like 50% were aware and those that were aware their questions had a much higher solve rate and so we have two links to ask a question one goes directly to the ask a question flow one goes to that interim page where we explain this is a forum and we link to the guidelines do you have the differences for people entering from those two points well i'm talking about like when people arrive at the the page where they have to fill in the box with information and the point was whether when they are filling that box with information are they aware that what they're writing there will go on the public forum or are, are, or do they think it will go in a new or to some support representative? Uh, uh, Michael, I, I think what you mean is uh, whether they uh, whether we uh, distinguish between um, people who asked from use, uh, from the main navigation, like they asked a question from the top navigation, yep. and those who went to commit, get committee support and then clicked on the button, right? Right. Yeah. So we can't tell. Once you look at the questions, so we can only look at the questions. But when you look at the questions, you don't know where they came from. Uh, so like one test could be is to make that, that uh, top ask a question thing go to the get community support page and see if more people know that they're asking in a forum. Because on one page we do explain this is a forum, here's the guidelines, you want to check this stuff before you post and all of that. And on the other one, we just jump you right to the ask a question flow. Maybe that the, the, that's the other 50% for Right, could be. I don't know, just a guess. Yeah. Interesting. Well, right. the point is that we will need in, I mean, no matter where they come from, we need to make sure uh, that they actually are aware of the fact that they are posting, they will be posting on a forum and maybe even have a link to some guidelines or something so that they know uh, what's actually happening there. Yeah, it's just, that's one of these things, like in the, I remember when we uh, went through the design, the current design that we have, um, there was a thing about not putting in uh, an extra roadblock to asking a question, like that deterred people from asking by having this extra page to read before mm -hmm. you got to go to the ask a question flow. And so we have these two flows. Um, but there was no consideration about this thing about do they know this is a public uh, forum or not kind of deal. So maybe that's more important than we thought. I mean, the thing that you can do, of course, is we can uh, do, we can test. Uh, unfortunately, it's not a perfect A-B testing. And now we are in the recommendations part of uh, our findings, but whatever. Uh, so what we can do is we can link people always, even if they click on the top navigation, to the page where we explain it as a forum. Right. And then and do this for a week and see if the uh, solved rate actually goes up for that week. Um, it's not a perfect A-B testing because we are not uh, using the same, uh, same population. Right. Unfortunately, it's, and it's very shaky to build anything on top of that. But if you have 30% solved rate now and 60% solved rate when, when you change it, of course, then you might be able to draw conclusions from that. Uh, guys, it's already past time, so yep. I think we should. We should well, yeah. So you're going to so, present this whole thing on Monday, the longer version. Yeah, apparently yep. so. Or, or next Thursday, or we can have a special meeting because this is awesome. Well, I mean, if you're interested, before that, just like go through whatever is written there uh, and okay. can, like ask questions if you... Cool. Yeah, if you could link the presentation there, we could do our homework yep. yeah. before Monday. All right. Um, Madalena, did you, you, you put yours already there, right? Let me put uh, mine it, was on, it was on here already, I think. Oh, sorry. I should put, put it on soon. Yeah, add it to the Etherpad. I'll try to sync up this, the Kadir, the presentation with the slides uh, and the video before I publish it so that it's not uh, oh, five, five slides off or something. Because uh, that was that was pretty, pretty interesting. So stuff. So, all right. Well, it's uh, we're over time. Thank you, guys. And uh, see you Monday. Ciao. Cheers. Right. Take care. Bye. Bye. Bye.